Bienvenidos and welcome back to Puro Pinche Gol, the place we discuss all things USMNT y la Selección Mexicana. My name is Adrian. I'm joined once again by my co-host Tocayo after watching that uh, crazy Nations League semifinal match between the USA and Mexico. Adrian, man, how are you? I'm doing all right, man. Um, just all right. Uh, it's, it's been a difficult uh, match. I'm not surprised. I expected it, but damn, I wasn't expecting it to be that embarrassing. Yeah, man, it, it was it was crazy. We'll get right into it. And uh, this is not our normal format. Uh, you know, we're recording as soon as this uh, match ended to, you know, get you guys content, uh, you know, quickly ASAP, get our reactions out there. Um, let's start off with the, obviously the match is important, discussing the match is important, but there was one news that I think even overshadowed that. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it. We'll make a video giving our reactions to it, but it's more or less been confirmed that Triple G, Greg Berhalter, after wasting so much time by the Federation is going to be reappointed as the USA head coach. Um, you know, news that nobody really, I mean, you could, if you follow the USA, you kind of expect this, but I mean, you, you thought they would have learned from it, right? I mean, especially had hiring that Matt Crocker guy. Uh, he had said he was going to commit a deep search. They were going to take all summer to do it. And now I guess that search has ended in like a week's time. Um, you know, there was rumors that Patrick Vieira, Thierry Henry, uh, a couple other European coaches, Jesse Marsh, obviously kind of uh, his name was thrown out there and it was kind of uh, decided earlier today that he was not going to be coached. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's Triple G again. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be sure to get into our in-depth reactions to that in a later video. <laughs> but, man, let's let's start off with the match, man. Um, first thing we learned, Diel Coca out of his depth, right? I mean, Big, what was yeah. that lineup? <laughs> No, I, I, I'm I not too sure what happened. That I, I, You wanted to think that Yokoka would have the advantage because of his experience, right? Being the first coach for, for, for a while now and being the champ, the, one of the recent champions of Liga Mekis. But today, what I learned is that he was completely just shocked. Uh, I don't know what happened. I'm not sure if he wasn't able to see as much uh, film uh, of how the USMNT played. Um, or he just thought that, you know, he could probably withstand um, the the USMNT attack for 60 minutes and maybe find a lucky strike. But damn, dude, I mean, he, I'm not, I'm not even going to say he's unlucky. He just was completely out of his depth. Uh, he has proven, I mean, I think this, this match shows that La Selección le quedó grande. So... I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm um, surprised, but damn, I wasn't expecting him to just, you know, take those three goals in like nothing. Yeah. And then not even react to it. I mean, you know, after the first goal, uh, you would have thought he would have made changes in the halftime. And then the second goal happens right after halftime. And he still takes like 15 minutes to start making changes. He plays with a back five uh, where you're losing and you still have back five and it takes you forever to make a change. I mean, you know, I, I want to kind of we we can't really discuss every player in in detail just because it'd be insanely long video and you know everybody would per pretty much get a thumbs down from Mexico during this game. Um, but uh, you know, I think one of the low low points for sure was uh, Jorge Sanchez, um, and uh, he was just getting beat by his man constantly. He didn't. He had. He he just looked like he was playing uh, completely out of his depth. And I want to say the the how we kind of predicted that we, we kind of said that the battle would be won in the midfield. The battle was completely lost by Luis Chavez, Antuna and Edson Alvarez yeah. in the midfield. They were completely dominated um, by uh, Musa and McKenney and Reina, that triangle. And uh, it just, you know, I, I didn't even see Alvarez touch a ball. I mean, he obviously did in the first half, but I didn't really see him do much until the second half. Um, Luis Chavez couldn't get a single uh, good center in or cross in from uh, Balón Parados. Um, you know, we, we we saw him make that stunner in the World Cup, and we were thinking, oh man, he'll he'll at least get some on frame for you know the free free throws or free kicks, but not even. And uh, you know, back to the Theo Coca, uh, he takes out Henry Martin puts in for Bebote and a point when you probably want to have two forwards up top to try to get back in the game at that point, you're still down two nil. Um, I don't know, man, the Elko got his, 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 uh, lineup didn't make sense. His changes didn't make sense. Like you said, it might just be too big for him. 
Um, anything you want to add? I mean, no, you, you're spot on, dude. I think one of the biggest problems was the left flank of Mexico. So Jesus Gallardo, for some reason, I mean, not for some reason, we all know that Orbelín Pineda can't defend for his life. I mean, he's not a defensive player whatsoever. He was more focused on going going forward, which was leaving Jesus Gallardo, who is a very, very attack-minded winger, uh, or I guess uh, left, sorry, yeah, left wing back. Um, and that's the reason why Edson Alves had to spend a lot of time trying to break the midfield, trying to make, be the stopper in the midfield and not being able to grab the ball and distribute as he normally does when he, when he plays in, in Ajax. Uh, so you have Liz Chavez trying to, you know, go through that left flank. And then you have also Victor Guzman, who will show up to cover for Jesus Gallardo, but they're not as fast as Team Wea. And Team Wea was just destroying Victor Guzman every single time they had a one-on-one. I mean, the Oakland must have seen this and all of his assistant coach must have seen them, but for some reason they decided not to do anything about it. You know, I think Osiel Herrera would have been good. He's so quick when he came yeah. on. I, I think, you know, a thing I learned at least here um, was that he was probably the bright spot for me at least. Um, he didn't play a lot. It was probably 20 minutes, but um, and it could be down to the fact that USA was winning 2-0 or 3-0 by this point, so they maybe stepped their foot off the gas a little bit. But I think he was... Mexico's most dangerous player. Uh, he was the fastest player. He he won a lot of fouls. He drew a lot of fouls. And since he got on there, that flank from Timmy Weah was completely neutralized. Uh, he wasn't going down that flank anymore. He was getting marked by Osiel Herrera. Um, and I don't know. He should have probably put him on, you know, speed for speed earlier. Um, you know, going... And another thing we learned here, man, I want to say... Christian Pulisic, I mean, we, we we learned that he's a completely different player for the USA versus Chelsea. Um, mm-hmm. Granted, he maybe doesn't get the playing time he needs at Chelsea, but uh, when he plays for the USA, he plays for the shirt. And, man, he uh, – two clutch goals. Um, and what what can we say? I mean, he, he had a fantastic performance that Captain America, didn't he? Man of the match. I mean, if there's someone who we can call man of the match, it's him. Uh, he was calm and collected when he needed to. I know he missed that big opening – on the very on the first half, but man, it doesn't really matter right now because he scored twice, uh, coming from coming from behind, which is great. I mean, it's a, I think it's a it's a signature. Both of them are signature goals for for Christian Pulisic, right? Coming down from you know an unexpected part, pretty much eating the back of all defenders, showing up on that specific opening whenever he's needed. Uh, granted, on the first goal, I think he he was lucky to get that rebound. Uh, but it's, it's one of, one of his classic signatures was his, it's fast and then cross the ball. And the other one is just pure speed, man. He, he needed to be there at a fast pace. He gets there and then just, you know, touches the ball in. Uh, I mean, there's, there's not too much to say, but just giving praise. I think from, if, I mean, if you look at the confrontations that happened during the match, he was one of the guys who was trying to keep everything, you know, uh, in control, trying to keep the, the, the team uh within bounds um and 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 i I think uh i know that tyler adams is now the captain but but i feel that christian pulisic deserves to uh to i guess i guess uh not regain but maintain uh the captain status yeah he was definitely keeping his head cool and uh, he knew that uh you know anything that could cause damage to the USA in the final during this game that was already won, you know, red cards, right? I mean, USA got two red cards, Mexico got two red cards, and now uh, Sergino Dest and Weston McKinney will not be playing in the final against Canada, um, which is big losses for, um, you know, the USMNT, obviously. Uh, Joe Scali would probably play there for Dest, and um, De La Torre would probably play there for McKinney. But it definitely is a drop in quality there. Um, another thing we want to highlight here, a thing we learned here, man, uh, the fourth thing, Honestly, kind of what we were just talking about now, it, it was just the dirtiness of the match, the the unsportsmanship of the match. It's just, uh, it just a crazy, crazy atmosphere, right? Um, it, it's always going to be like that, heated in this type of classicals. Um, but, man, to see it get down to, to that, uh, that, that foul by um, Cesar Montes on Balogun when he got beat or, you know, when Balogun took the ball from him, uh, McKinney unnecessarily provoking, uh, provoking the Mexican fans right in front of them. Um, just unnecessary stuff that, you know, soils the game, right? I mean, now McKinney's mm-hmm. missing the next game, uh, and it's just, it just unnecessary, unnecessary things for sure. 
Um, how did you how did you see Balogun during this match? I think he was all right. Um, I I'm, I don't know if he made a good case to be the starter for next match. Um, I think he was a workhorse in the sense that he was attracting a lot of the defensive attention from Mexico. Uh, he wasn't outstanding in any way, but I think he was a good cog for the machine. Um, I think he he understood that he had to do dirty work on this match, and he did. He was there to open spaces for Christian Pulisic and Tim Weah, which he constantly did throughout the match. He was there to be a body where the ball could you know go to and retain it and open up uh, the flanks for both of the wingers, as well as allowing the midfielders to move forward and uh, support, uh, get support from, uh, or yeah, support the, the attacking or the, the, the offensive drive. So all in all, I, I mean, I probably give him like a 7.58 out of 10. Um, not a bad match. Unfortunately, he didn't score, but he, he put up his overall and got to work. Yeah, you, you put it perfectly. He's a good uh, cog in the machine, right? He um he fits right in. It, it looks like uh, obviously yeah. he there was a couple balls where he misplaced passes because he thought the runner was going to run this way or that way. But that just comes with time playing with these mm -hmm. guys, developing that chemistry, and I think he'll fit right in. Um, he did, like you said, probably a seven seven point five. Um, but uh, he he was tracking back like he did against yeah. Sarmontes. Um, he was pulling defenders, leaving Weko, leaving spaces. Um, I think, yeah, I think he'll fit right in. And, uh, you know, Pepe's not making it easy for BJ or for mm -hmm. Triple G, who's coming back, um, scoring that goal, that great run by Dest, by the way, um, mm -hmm. and great finish, calm finish by Pepe. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see that uh, striker battle uh, between between them two kind of develop. Um, what else would you like to add, man? I know we kind of, this is a impromptu video, kind of giving our quick initial reactions to this match. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that I learned, I don't know if it's a positive, well, I don't think if, I'm not sure if it's a positive, neutral or negative, right? Uh, I, I feel that it's more just because of the, the, the result of today, the score of today, I think is more of a neutral rather than a positive. Um, but, um, maybe it's two things that I learned today is Mexico's, uh, generational, generational change is happening. So the, the average for the entire roster for the Nations League and the Gold Cup is 25 years old, which is significantly better than what they showed up at uh, Qatar last year. Um, and so that's one thing. I think that's that's a neutral thing, right? Uh, we, we've been discussing the generational change for, for a while now, and it's happening. The other thing that I learned, and maybe it's also neutral, perhaps a negative, is this generational change is going to take a while. Um, I... I think things were, will get worse, but before they get better, um, it's just a, it's a situation of all of these players are maybe playing together for the first time. Um, some of them have already been uh, called up for La Selección Mexicana plenty of times, like Cesar Montes. Uh, but then you have guys like Victor Guzmán who had maybe two matches under his belt with La Selección Mexicana. So it's going to take a while for them to settle down, for them to understand what they're playing, and also for for, for El Tri to find a coach that really understands what the Mexican player is capable of doing. Uh, and I say this because it's another thing that I learned is definitely a negative is we know that Diego was completely out of his depth, but I think his biggest mistake is not realizing that the Mexican player, the idiosyncrasy of the Mexican player, the physical attributes of the Mexican player are not meant for his style of play. You don't have a big striker who's able to act as a post, right? You don't have super or extremely quick, fast players that can feed from that number nine uh, deflecting balls because of his physical presence. Um, you don't have the correct defenders to be playing a three three center backs and two wing backs uh, that go up and down because they don't have the defensive uh, office that they need in order to be on that position, right? So even even if he was out of his depth, I think he's just not understanding. He's he's he thinks that he has the the tools that that he will normally have in a club where he can actually you know get any players that he wants. Um, and he's not understanding the actual ammunition that he has on his uh, on his side. So th those are three things that I learned. Um, again, I don't, I'm not sure if the first two are neutral. 
But this last one is is just a negative one, man. It doesn't bode well for him. Is this a complete fracaso here for Mexico? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it's a it's a failure for uh, Mexico's goal in Nations League, right? Every single time that Mexico doesn't move on to the final at the CONCACAF level, it's just a complete big failure. Uh, I know that people like to say failure is a is a difficult word uh, word or pill to swallow. Uh, but if we leave it just to you know the actual core of the word and the, 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 if if we understand that the goal of Mexico was to win the Nations League, then it's a failure. Yes, this young team will learn from this mistake. Yes, uh, I really hope that those who are the leaders of this group uh, really get to you know take a step back and realize what are the things that they need to improve. Um, But yeah, no, this is this is a it's a fracaso, big time. And we'll end it with that. Um, USA ultimately winning three 0 moving on to Sunday's match against Canada in the final, um, where they will be without uh, Sergio Dest and Weston McKinney for that game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as we as we wrap up wrap up this uh, impromptu quick reaction video, uh, six things we learned, probably more than six things actually. Um, <laughs> hand, where can our listeners find us, brother? Dude, they can always find us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the notifications. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast on. Lastly, but not least, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Puro Pinche Gol. We post stuff every now and then. Yeah, make sure to follow us and make sure to keep it here at Puro Pinche Gol because we'll be obviously previewing the match against Canada, giving our reactions mm-hmm. to that match after it's done, and kind of you know just giving our reactions to constantly everything happening in the u.s circle mexico circle maybe the old coca is going to have some news here and waking up to uh you know we obviously have some editorial news that we covered with uh triple g returning um yeah. let us know in the comments were you happy about triple g returning you fed up like we are about the uh, federation and how they uh, just clown around um what were your reactions to these to this match did your team win were you going for usa were you going for mexico and you know just give us your reactions of how you think each team performed we definitely like to interact with you guys there in the comments um adrian man it's been a was a long night was a long match (laughs) um i'll see you the next one brother take it easy my friend that was a pleasure likewise man see ya